lads and welcome back to the channel. My name is Scottish Koala and today we're talking about the King Tiger 105 and the Panther 2. People have asked me about Gaijin's removal of these vehicles due to historical accuracy and my opinions on that possibility. So, here we go. Just before we get started however, let's just admire the fact that tanks now have hats to wear. Historical accuracy, mmm. Anyway, <clears throat> completely unrelated. So, the removal of these vehicles is not confirmed just yet. I made a mistake in my Q&A discussion video, that was due to a translation error in the Reddit post, but it is looking likely, so don't put off grinding these vehicles, guys. My favourite of the two is the Panther 2, but I'll be honest, I don't really enjoy either of them a great deal. However, the removal of these vehicles could prove a pain for German teams as their 7.0 lineup is about to get a lot smaller. The lineup itself currently is excellent with the Tiger 2 and Panther 2, Jagd Panzer 45 or RE251 if you have it, Jagd Tiger and Kugelblitz, as well as the Arado C3, Horton 229 and ME262A1-U4 or A2A. You have a lot of diversity and dynamic ability with this lineup. It's a good one, even in an up tier. Your standard matches will be 6.7 to 7.7, so you've got a better chance with these tanks than you do with the 6.7s. There's also the BR 7.3 Kampfpanzer M47, which these vehicles are good backups for. The fact is, however, these vehicles never existed, not even in prototype form, and because of that, they look to be getting the axe. The 10.5cm Tiger II or Koenig's Tiger is a slightly up-armoured Tiger II-H with a ton more horsepower than even the SLE-16 and the 10.5cm L-68 gun. It has a significantly slower reload than its fellow King Tigers, making it easily the lesser of the two tanks in my opinion. The Panther II, however, is essentially a Panther F with a more heavily armoured hull and a lot more horsepower, making it a fairly nimble thing considering just how survivable it is. I've bounced repeated shells from American heavy tanks at that BR and easily had the reload to punish them in return. It has a laser rangefinder and is fitted with the long 88mm KWK-43 gun from the Tiger IIs and various Sherman tank destroyers. Now these vehicles were succeeded by the Entwick Long Standard Panzer E75 and E50 respectively and so never left the drawing board stage. However, the Panther II came far closer. The parts going into it existed already in the Panther F, the blueprints were drawn up, the assembly line ready and waiting to begin building Panther IIs. It was just never switched on because of the E50, the preferred design. The 10.5cm Koenigsteiger on the other hand is purely a fantasy vehicle. It never left the drawing board because it was never even possible to build. It didn't even reach the drawing board per se because it was believed to be no way of fitting a 105mm gun breech into the existing King Tiger turret. Now, sure, the breech itself may have fitted, but the design originally had the 10.5cm Koenigsteiger fitted with both a stabiliser and an autoloader. Yeah, try fitting that into an already cramped turret. We don't see this in War Thunder, and actually if you look in the x-ray view, the gun breech within the turret is actually just the 88mm breech rather than a 105mm, and I'm pretty sure if the 105mm breech was modelled in the 10.5cm Koenigsteiger's turret, yeah, Hans would be losing his head. The idea of a King Tiger with a 10.5cm gun was carried over to the E75 Standard Panzer, which consisted of several more extensive reworks. However, neither this vehicle nor the E50 were ever built either. Pity Germany spent so much time and so many resources on the bloody Ferdinand, eh? With this in mind, I think it would be fair to remove the 10.5cm Tiger II, but keep the Panther II, as it was at least a design that was said yes to originally before the E50 stole its thunder. Pun intended. There are other pre-prototype vehicles in game, the R2Y2s for example, the Horton 229 also has incorrect guns and the E100 was never fully assembled, just the hull was built. Although keep in mind that the hull is the only unique part of the E100, the turret being lifted straight from the Panzer VIII mass. Removing the King Tiger would not be such a big deal for the Germans, I typically see very few of them in battles anyway, but removing the Panther II would be a crying shame as that tank is the perfect harmony of the Tiger and Panther tanks and a great upgrade to the 6.0 Panthers. Not to mention, like I said, we now have hats for the tanks to wear and unhistorical custom skins that can be visible to other players in game. Historical accuracy? Hmm, it sounds like Gaijin's been in the vodka again. We also have plenty of prototypes in the game, and they generally don't cause balancing issues. <coughs> <coughs> now these tanks were added way back when, and they served an important purpose of giving Germany enough vehicles that filled their role of balancing the meta perfectly at the time, 
but now they're a little less necessary. The R2-Y2s, on the other hand, still serve a necessary role in game, so I don't see them being removed. Gaijin has at least confirmed that if these vehicles are removed, something will definitely be added to compensate. This is really the only thing that stops me being actually mad at this removal of vehicles, as I'm just excited to see what Gaijin may add to replace them, and if they do fill the hole adequately, yeah, we'll see what we get. What could that be? People have stated that since the E50 and E75 were never built either, that it doesn't make much sense to add them in as replacements. But perhaps it makes a little more sense than the 10.5cm Koenigsteiger at least. The E50 and E75 standard Panthers were interesting vehicles, essentially replacements for the Panthers and King Tiger tanks respectively, with several extensive reworks, more armour and much better engines giving them a fairly decent top speed considering just how heavily armoured they were. Think the comparison between the mouse and the E100 and you've essentially got the difference between the King Tiger and the E75 and the Panther and the E50 respectively. They also use the same guns as the tanks we see in game and looked very similar so it would be very easy for Gaijin to implement them as replacements. The E5 and E25 could also then be implemented in the future, we already have the E100 so it would honestly kind of make sense. What about the Panzer 7 Low or Lion? Another paper-only vehicle, but at least a physically plausible design. There's also the Proto Leopard fitted with a 90mm BK-90 cannon. Think of a cross between the Leopard 1 and RU-251. There are several other tanks that could also fill the hole, so leave in the comments what you think might be implemented if these tanks are removed. Overall, I think this is dumb. I think it's a totally unfounded move by Gaijin. I think it's a real shame for people who are looking forward to these vehicles. And, above all, I think there's just no reason for it. At least not the Panther 2. Now, I'm lucky enough to have these vehicles already, but bloody hell, the replacements for them better be good or Gaijin's gonna have angry players on their hands. And those players have every right to be angry. Now remember, Gaijin is not going to remove these vehicles outright. If you have them already, you will keep them. Gaijin has never removed a vehicle from the game. They have only hidden them from the research tree. But there you have it, lads. That is my thoughts on the potential removal of the Tiger 2 105 and the Panther 2. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, as there will be new content out on my channel every single day. Leave your own thoughts on this topic down below. Come follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and all the rest. Links below, and as always, I'll see you lads next video. Nothing around. I assume the high frequency sonar on the top left will pick up enemy submarines. Oh, I don't see any right now. Oh, there's a noisemaker over here. I think there must be a sub over here. We've only got a thousand meters left of cable for the torpedo. Ah, uh, no, we can't do it. We put it on self holding just before we uh, lost the cable connection there. Right, fire another. Let's see if we can go find where that sub is that launched that uh, noisemaker.